Oh my goodness, you guys. My little wannabe home interior designer heart is so freaking happy right now. Look at all this. There's more in the front that came from the house. Can't wait to show you what we're working on today. So I'm running to our old house and my husband is over here working today and he's spraying fields, gotta get it done before the rain and that is him in front of me and he has our seven year old in there with him. For, I think it's her first time going to work with dad when he was spraying a field, but anyway, it's super exciting. I'm headed to there, like I've not even got there yet and it's funny, I ran into them. He's been over here for like four or five hours spraying and they're not yet done yet, but seeing him on the road in the spray rig reminds me of when we were first dating because we spent a lot of time chasing each other around fields, trying to find each other and track each other down when he was working and stuff. Anyways, so fun times. How fun. So he just pulled off the main road because he can take a dirt road uh, shortcut the rest of the way through town without having to be on blacktop. And as they turned off and I was passing by, I could see Hadley like sitting in the little tiny side seat. So cute. Oh, it's so fun. That's such fun times. When you're from a farming family and like I was raised in a, my dad's a farmer and then I married a farmer. And so just things like that, going to work with your dad, going to the field, riding in tractors, all that is just so fun. So even for me, when I started dating, you know, it was fun for me to go ride with him while he was working and just fun farmer life. Okay. So I'm back at the old house and the story as to why I'm doing everything you're going to see in this video is a whole story. I'm just gonna have to catch you up at another video today. We're going to tackle a couple of gardening projects. Um, I'm going to be putting some of my seedlings as well as some that I bought into my old kitchen garden and I'm also replanting the log that's in the yard um, that I've planted up every year and so anyways I'm excited to do that. I've got some soil with me. You guys have got tons of stuff back there and different things for home interior projects which you'll see in other videos um, but I'm really excited to share all this with you guys and I hope that you enjoy it. Now I've got to unload this literally truckload of stuff. I got so many plants I'm freaking excited. Okay, so this is stunning, right? Stunning. Totally overpaid for this, but I feel no guilt. Before I show you the plant, so I have to take you over here and show you what I just found. There, there's a rose over here I put in last year, in like late summer. And it wasn't even supposed to be this color. Oh my goodness. It was supposed to be yellow and very fragrant. It's a David Austin rose that I paid a lot for. I'm going to smell it, but I don't want to get like a bee in my nose. Not very fragrant. Not fragrant. But oh my gosh, look at this. Tiny little guy loaded up with blooms. What is so ironic and hilarious about this is there is a house in Batesville, where we live now, that has a rose just like this. This color that is gorgeous and right now it's loaded up with buds and every time I drive past it I'm like oh my god that's so gorgeous and then I roll up here and my own is the same color so I I picked the yellow because I love yellow but also I wanted a really fragrant rose right here in the corner of this bed as we walk past it all the time and then you know when we moved we left it here but I'm actually digging this color now with all the green we have lots of greenery up here until other things start to bloom, of course. But anyways, this is, they say this is an annual, but it comes back for me every year. Freaking love it. Okay, before I get too distracted, knockout roses out there, obviously, loving their lives. And there's another water leak out here again. That's why there's um, blue things. I don't know if they've dug it up yet or not. Um, but anyway, so that's why that rose bush gets bigger than its sister right there, because <sighs> extra water. All right, so here's what we're starting with. There's some stuff in there. Um, over here is a perennial herb that keeps coming back. Otherwise, mostly weeds, lots of weeds. That might be a kale. And then this bed, we did potatoes last year. So I've got to pull all this out, the row covers and everything, pull the weeds, and there you have it. That's what I'll be working on. And I also have soil, so I'm going to add some soil to all three of these beds before I plant everything in here that I'm going to plant. So, now let me show you what I'm going to plant. <laughs> okay, first off, oh my god, look at this container. Look at this. Oh my god. 
my heart was torn between this and another combination that had a dahlia and then it had purple petunias and some other things but I just ended up loving this this is freaking stunning okay it was $70 at Home Depot yes $70 it's a little cray cray but you know you do what you do when you love plants all right so got my soil here I bought a hose because I wasn't sure if I had one here but I do and my tripod sprinkler because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant up this area I'm gonna set this gorgeous container kind of over here in the middle I'm gonna set up my tripod put it on a timer to water this area like every two days probably since we're not here like daily we don't live here um, so that's what I'm gonna do so that it's maintenance free so I bought that brought that stuff from the other house here are the plants that I bought I got myself two tomatoes because mine have just been doing terrible you guys it's my fault they got super leggy I've not transplanted them yet these are I think they're both bush early girl yeah because I love early girl you can tell by this one right here putting on that they put on before any other tomato so when I plant these guys I will take that tomato off and probably all the flowers so it um, rather spends the next couple of weeks getting a good root in and growing then I got some dill got this beautiful look at this so windy and it's all whimsy and magical and lovely so I got that just for that for fun and I got sweet basil because it's awesome and then we turn around to here and this is what I brought from the other house these are the things I've started this tray is a whole lot of flowers this guy got bent in transit my uh, tripod sprinkler fell on it actually so I'll just head that and this little uh, marigold will be fine but anyway so we have a couple of peppers here and then a couple of tomatoes in the back which I'm gonna go ahead and plant but 70% of this tray is flowers we got sweet peas here vining up so it's mostly sweet peas marigolds and zinnias and I'm gonna pop the marigolds and the zinnias and I guess the sweet peas um, in different places in the landscape just to do that and then we've got some broccoli here one of my herbs uh, coriander that's doing okay so I thought I'd bring it and then over here we have cabbage broccoli broccoli cauliflower and here we have chamomile lettuce chives leeks celery and onions and I just want to get all of these in my kitchen garden because they're just they need to be out of here I don't have a place for them to go at the other place I just want to get them in here so that's my plan but before I do that I'm going to do the log bed the tree log bed and here are the flowers I got for that so I'll give you a close-up in just a second but one thing I want to know is we're going to top it up with soil first because I don't think I did that last year and all containers you know you need to replenish some soil every year so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna put these plants in it this is what I decided to go with because I saw a, a peach petunia but there was only one and it wasn't like peachy enough to really accent this stunning begonia I put some of these over here behind me in the kitchen garden landscape beds last year and freaking loved it it doesn't get huge but I mean look at the color of that that is like it's three or four different colors it's stunning it's gorgeous they love shade the the tire log bed is in the shade not tire but the log bed is in the shade um, I got this for some visual interest and some texture and so I'm gonna do a white petunia in the middle so that I have a trailer and then I'm gonna space these guys around so let's get started on that okay so here is our tire bed oh my god okay so here's our tree log bed this is the view from the road and we have some daffodils planted in there which is done past their time to bloom and some gladiolas over here on the side so I like to plant things towards this side of the bed so that they're tall enough and potentially trail over on this side because this is kind of like the public view 
this is how it's most often viewed when I take pictures and stuff of the yard and everything else. Oh, I will mention, I will mention there is still a pansy in there. I don't know if that's going to go with the color theme I have, so I might pull that out. We'll see, but you know, it's got some weeds there, and this is like a bulb flower. Don't know what kind, but anyways, mostly going to pull stuff up. And it looks like I actually don't need a ton of soil. I was thinking it was way lower than that. have to pause for a moment of real life because I just realized the water is still off from when they fixed that line so anyways I'll show you these guys but I'm gonna clean them off really quick and water them in all right here it is from the front well I really like that so um, in case you, you might not have noticed in the time-lapse but the pansy that was left was not in the center so I ended up moving it over and realizing I could split the petunia into two and center the pansy like that make it look like it was intentional so I did that and once I got the silver one in and the begonia I felt like there was too much space in between so then I came in and I split the silver one in half and flanked the begonia and I like that so much better I love it these silver ones I can't remember the name of them you guys I'll put them on the bottom of the screen Dusty Miller Dusty Miller doesn't get giant neither does begonia um, they'll get bigger but not real huge it's really gonna be the petunia that gets bigger and sprawls out so this will be nice it'll fill in even more it'll look wonderful but for now it even looks really good and I love it So I made myself a little impromptu seating area while I'm working over here in the kitchen garden because um, so gardens up there got the last bed back here and these chairs were just uh, under the car part I don't even know where they came from honestly <laughs> but whatever so set two chairs out and a little table and some cute decorations because those things make my heart happy even if they feel like they're temporary or something and this beautiful flower I'm gonna leave here I got the the watering tripod set up back there and I'm, what I'm going to do is set it up on like a half circle so it gets my landscape beds back there and all this up here hopefully I'll be testing that out at the end um, but anyway so I'm going to get to work on these beds on uh, I'm going to do a time lapse so what I'm going to do is pull the weeds out I'm going to add some fresh soil and then we'll get to planting and we'll probably slow down a bit for planting because it is stunningly gorgeous and beautiful here today and slightly breezy I don't know if you can just barely see the trees moving it's a wonderful breeze to work in so let's get to it So as you could probably see, it would be a lot better if I had a lot more soil to add in there. So uh, what I'll probably do is do three, maybe six more bags, but I'm going to go ahead and plant today because obviously you can fill in soil around plants. And I did put this soil on top of leaves and small twigs that were in the beds because the soil on top of them and then rain and everything science uh, they'll just break down so I'm not worried about that plus the leaves under the soil that break down will feed the soil as well as worms so now I'm just gonna go through and place my plants and figure out where I want stuff and the two new tomatoes I bought are gonna go in here and stay in here all summer long the tomatoes I brought from the other house are really just going in here temporary and that may sound crazy but I'm putting them in here so they've got a place to grow and thrive and try to get them to not be leggy if that doesn't work I'll just pull them out 
if it does work, I can transplant them again later. But everything else that you see that I'm gonna put in today is gonna stay here. So here's what I've done so far and the rest is going to be fine tuning and spacing as I actually get them in. But we've got brassicas for the majority of this bed. We have basil. This is a stevia herb and then that's my coriander. And then these are the sweet pea flowers. I'm going to just eventually make a little tripod thing for them to climb up. Over here we've got our two early grilled tomatoes in the front with the lavender and the dill. And then a lot of this in the middle will be these greens and these are herbs as well my priority actually is getting all these herbs somewhere in here and then that one of those seedlings is a cucumber and I want to put it in that corner the rest are peppers and one of those seedlings one's an herb two are peppers one's a tomato so I'm just going to kind of space those out everything I have back here in this back bed with the two existing potato plants are tomatoes I need to google that real quick I'm pretty sure they're not companion plants so I may not be able to do that but these are peppers I forgot so what I may do is peppers and herbs and move all the potatoes up front I mean all the tomatoes up front because um, I'm pretty sure they can't go together and that is a weed that is not <laughs> that is not a tomato plant that is not a potato plant so I need to pull that out anyway so if that's the case, then this will be peppers and herbs. So I'm gonna get to planting really quick so the video is not super duper long, and then I'll come back at the end and show you how everything landed. Would you be like two seconds for you guys? Okay, so I got everything planted. I've got my right contact is bothering me, so I can I've probably got mess. Yep, I've got mascara smeared on my face. I still haven't figured out how to turn the water on. I was trying to do it by hand. I think my husband uses a tool to do it. But anyways, um, he's coming <laughs> to fix that. So, I got everything planted. Yay! Even though I can barely see. Oh, this contact's so annoying. So, I'm going to show you everything. And all three beds are, like, super full. So, that makes me happy. They don't need anything else. I've got flowers, herbs, and plants. Flowers, herbs, and veggies. So, um, I planted everything, including some... Um, Zinnias and marigolds in this landscape bed here where I intended, except six more zinnias and marigolds in that back back bed by the hollyhock because I went back there with the plants just a minute ago and there's a snake skin back there. And I'm like, no, thank you. Cause I don't know when it was last there. So I just set the plants there in the little containers and hopefully I can set up the irrigation system so that they get watered until I have the nerve to plant them, which will be next time my husband's here with me. <laughs> or I might even ask him to plant them because I'm that crazy and I'm not a fan of snakes. Anyways, let's look at these plants. Look at that! Full of baby plants. So fun. All right, so I'm going to go through here. So I have... Um, two marigolds here and two here and this is a basil then we come around the side and this is our pepper bed because like I mentioned in that last clip um, I cannot plant tomatoes or peppers or anything in the nightshade family with potatoes okay so all my peppers went here we've got a row of goddess pepper goddess peppers they're sweet <laughs> and then a row of bell peppers these are unknown peppers because they didn't have a name and these are El Jefe jalapenos Here's where I put the sweet peas, which are flowers, and I'll make a little thing for them to vine up on. There are coriander and hyssop, and okay, that's it for that bed. Then we come over here, and in the front, I've got the two early girl tomatoes, lavender and dill. And then we come along here, and we've got baby plants, so we've got to get closer. We've got chamomile, my only garlic chives to survive. And then wildly interspersed are my kind of temporary tomatoes. These are almost all exclusively early girls. I've got two cucumber plants here. They're straight eight, and I'm going to make a little thing for them to climb. 
I've got three lettuce here. In that side, my tags are facing the other way. Okay, so we've got green onions here, which looks so sad right now, but I really hope they rebound. And then here we have celery. And then we've got two leeks here. Never grown those before. They look just like onions, but I'm hoping they'll do okay because they're really good in soup. Again, that's the three lettuce. Take that back. That's Jericho lettuce, and those two are iceberg lettuce. And then again, we're back to all these tomatoes. Over here, we just had that one um, potato plant. The other thing was a weed. So I put my brassicas in here, and they're kind of crazy. I mean, just not as organized as I would prefer them, but whatever. These right here are baby broccoli, which is a smaller variety I'm trying this year that doesn't head up as much. Instead, it puts on multiple smaller heads. And then broccoli green magic I've grown before, and it's kind of a good old standard. And I think all four, maybe it's just these three, are that. That's what I mean about mixed up. And then this one is broccoli green magic. Oh, well, it's the same thing. Okay, so didn't realize that. These two are song cauliflower. Then we come around. And we have sweet and tender cabbage I've never grown before. And that's what that is too. I guess that's what these three things are. So they're kind of together-ish. So there we go. That'll be fine. Look how great this looks here. Yay. So sun is going to, I mean, it's not like it's going down when I got things I would do in the house. I was going to direct sow these um, this time because I'm behind. Ones should have gone in 5.5, five, should have gone in 4.8. These are, I think, watermelon. But I'm going to tell myself, hey, whatever, good job, all this stuff's in the ground, right? So I'll be back here in a few days working on another project. Everything else I need to do is inside. Um, so maybe I'll just do these then. So I'll just set these inside. So for now, I'm glad this project is done. I'm going to go ahead and get my hose and everything set up for the tripod sprinkler. Because my husband will be here shortly. So if I get that up and going uh, and not very long... I'll close out this video with a clip of that. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. It's not season still. Y'all, contact problems are the pits. Especially when your hands are filthy. Filthy. And there's, you can't do much to make it better because the water's not on. So I can't go wash my hands and then clean my contact. Which I'll do as soon as my husband gets here. But anyways, hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for stopping by. Mwah.